So this was a proof that extracting energy from black holes was indeed possible. But what about a black hole bomb? Well, this was actually proposed by a separate team back in 1972 and was kind of similar in concept, but a little bit different in execution. That paper is also in the description, by the way. And here this would work slightly differently. And in essence here, you would still take a black hole or some kind of a spinning body, but then would place some kind of a reflective material around it, including the entire black hole or the entire spinning cylinder, in order to generate a positive feedback. In other words, as the waves escape the ergosphere, they bounce back from the mirror just to enter the black hole again and to increase in energy even more. And as you keep doing this more and more, and as the light gets reflected, mathematically speaking, researchers behind the study calculated that this should actually produce an enormous amount of energy equivalent to a sudden enormous explosion. All of this the result of a positive feedback and an enormous amplification of waves by some kind of a reflective material around a black hole or around a spinning cylinder. And in terms of theory, this combined a bunch of concepts, including what's known as the Penrose process and super radiance and the previously explained Zeldovich effect. And Zeldovich himself even proposed that, in theory, it might be possible to amplify a lot of these electromagnetic waves, in theory once again causing some kind of an explosion. But naturally here, you would have to have some kind of a super reflective material just to prevent any additional energy loss and to basically encourage this amplification. And that's because in order to make this feedback loop work, the signals here would have to be amplified exponentially until some kind of a random noisy event makes the system unstable and makes it explode. 